Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. And now, here's Bill Bullington. Excuse me. Welcome back. Glad to be here. Just thought I would start off today's show by talking about the uh, upcoming workshop we have. And that's actually going to be this Thursday. So you can go to my website, BullingtonCapital.com, to sign up for it. Or you can call us at 330-664-0700. No, uh, it's all free. Corporate College does a great job with refreshments. We're going to have a really good time. Uh, got a couple of, uh, I've always got a couple new tools. I'm, I'm always experimenting with something. The, uh, and, uh, I think this is a, uh, this is one of the better ones because it's, it's super simple. You know, the, the topics that we're going to cover during the seminar are, are running out of money during retirement, how you can avoid that. And I know I've brought up, I, I've used some other tools in the past and quite frankly, I don't think they were completely developed. Um, they did a good job with a large portion of it. But this one's a little simpler and it's more comprehensive. So how cool is that? When you can make something easier and make it more comprehensive at the same time, that is a really big trick to pull off. So I'm really uh, excited about that. I am going to give away a little laptop. I was going to give away a Chromebook, but HP had a, a deal. They have, these, they have these laptops they're trying to get rid of. They're very small. Uh, the screen, I think, is only about 12 inches, which is still uh, pretty good, about the size, larger than a tablet. And they're regular Windows 10 computers, so they do everything, not just the uh, Chromebook thing. So I'm going to give a, I'm going to give one of those away. Um, by the way, I just ordered it yesterday. I just found out about it yesterday, so I ordered it yesterday. I'm not sure it'll be in by then, but we'll just uh, mail it whenever we get it. So we're going to do a little drawing and uh, give this away and. Uh, uh, in the future, I think, I don't know how many of these they have, but I'm really thinking about buying a lot of them <laughs> because they were, they were under 200 bucks. They, uh, they want to give these away or, uh, give them away. They want to sell them for that price. The, uh, that's, pre that's a pretty good deal. So I think every workshop for the next couple of years, we'll probably be, uh, giving one of these things away as a, I, there are so many tools available online and if you know how to use them, it's, uh, can be so helpful. I mean, just incredibly helpful. And I, I'm actually kind of jealous of the young people because they have access to all this stuff and I didn't. I had to pay a lot of money to get just data and then you had to do all the hard work yourself anyway. And uh, today it's uh, all been written down and coded and automated and it's nice. Uh, you do still have to learn how to how to use it. It's kind of like driving a car. You, know, you, you really don't have to have a uh, lot of experience fixing a car to be able to drive it. This is one of the things that kills me whenever I go to one of these computer classes. They, uh, they start off teaching you all this stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Hang on a second. <laughs> I've actually started to uh, pay for the individual instruction because it, it drives me crazy to go to a class and have them teach all this stuff on the outside chance you may need it one day. And it's not what you're going to be doing with it. Like when you're, when you're driving a car, you don't need to know what the chemical component of the insulator on the spark plugs is. <laughs> you just want to drive the car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's uh, with, with financial services, they do the same thing. They, they start teaching all this stuff. And a lot of it may come up at some point in time in your life. A lot of it probably not. I'd rather just focus on those things you can you can control, which are very few, incidentally. <laughs> you can control the amount of risk you're taking. That's what we're going to be talking about. That's a big part of what we're going to be talking about at the seminar. How do you avoid running out of money during retirement? How do you avoid running out of money during retirement? So if you're getting close and or if you don't know what that number is, okay, the, soft, the software package I'm going to be using shows both how much money you need to accumulate and how much money you need um, 
once you're decumulating and how not to overspend. And it'll answer those questions in a, in a flash. I mean, it's just, it's just really interesting. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, learning how to manage investments, uh, basic portfolio management skills. That it was the overriding topic. And uh, really, that's kind of the breakdown between stocks, bonds, and cash, how much money you have in each. So I'm assuming that with the stocks portion, you're doing something that's reasonably intelligent, like uh, using exchange-traded funds or you know baskets of stocks that meet certain criteria. Um, don't worry about it. If, if you don't understand that, what I just said, don't worry about it. Uh, seminar, it's really easy. In fact, I'm going to go through one of the models that I, I really like. It's my favorite model, not from a performance standpoint, because I have other models that have made more money. So think about that for a second. Think about what I just said. It's, it, it's my favorite portfolio management technique. And I've only been using it for, I don't know, 18 months. I only read about it about two years ago. And then I, every time I read about a strategy, I'll go back and back test it. But why would I like something that hasn't made the most money? Can you guess? Don't worry. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I like it because the logic of it makes so much sense. It makes it easier to stick with. It makes it easier to stick with the strategy. Even if I know I've got some others that have made more money than that, it doesn't really matter to me that much. In the long run, they're all going to they're all going to come out somewhere between 1 or 2% from each other. That's typically how that works. You look at uh, people are always arguing over which does better, value or growth, not normal people. These are investment people who are certainly not normal. <laughs> investment managers, are <laughs> they're a different breed. <laughs> so anyway, that, and a lot of them have this, these conversations about which is better value or growth. And reality is, if you look at super long time periods, they're within a couple percentage points of each other. And whichever one is leading is because it's outperformed over the last two or three years. That's, yeah, so that's how that works. So that, that's why it's good to have a little bit of both. I'm a big believer in having both value-oriented and growth strategies in your portfolio. It makes it a little smoother. And you're going to get the blended returns, which are typically a lot higher than people would get on their own. So uh, this strategy that I really like a lot is a value-oriented strategy. And it's super simple, but at the same time, it's incredibly complex. If you start digging down beneath the surface, I mean, you can understand it in 30 seconds. As soon as I describe it and explain how it works, you're going to go, oh, that makes sense. Okay. But there are so many other things, little tiny items that this thing, uh, um, this simple formula captures that it's just, it's, it's mind boggling to me. I think it's just one of the coolest things I've ever learned in the business. And yeah, certainly I wish I'd have known this a long time ago, but the, uh, the amount of labor that that would have taken to do this without the tools that we have today, without big data, the, uh, the amount of labor that this would have taken, phew, I mean, once every six months, you would not have seen me for an entire month. I'd ha I would have had to have taken two months off a year just to do the calculations. <laughs> and uh, see, the hard part about that is uh, you're doing this and it's, it could take you a month if you were doing it by hand. And by the time you got it all done, it will have changed a little bit. So prior to the last few years, you couldn't have done this anyway. Realistically, you couldn't have done it. Even somebody like me who, who spends most of their time doing things like this couldn't have done it. So that's a big benefit of having big data. And uh, thank goodness some of these guys publish their work with, uh, because... That's what I, I, I read about it, and I decided that I would try it. Uh, I built the models. I started testing, and I'm going, well, yeah, no, that, that actually not only does it make sense, but it does. It's, it seems to work really well. And about 18 months ago, I put some money in. Incidentally, when I put money into it, it started underperforming almost right away. <laughs> and because of the way the model is structured, that's probably going to happen. Um, the way that this works, the buy low, sell high thing, when you're buying low, you don't know that you've hit the bottom. That's what a lot of people think when they say buy low, sell high. They mean, oh, you want to buy the absolute bottom of the stock. Well, see, the problem with that is nobody knows where that is. 
And oftentimes, share prices will go down lower than their economic values, which makes them a big value to some people at some point in time. So uh, anyway, to make a long story short, I'm going to show you that. It's a very simple thing, uh, something that can be done. If you're a stock picker or you want to be a stock picker, I'm going to suggest that you look from those lists of the stocks that I'll be using in those portfolios. That's where you want, really want to concentrate. Those, the, those companies are earning the highest cash yields out of the top 1,500 stocks in the country. And in the United States, that puts them in the, in the top 2,000 at least minimally in the world. So you're taking the most profitable stocks out of the top 1,500 and uh, how you do that is really up to you. I just take the top 30. That's basically what I do. That's what I'm calling it is BCAP 30. I have a 50. You can do 50 as well. 50 is a little bit more diversified. 30, you know, you've got 3.3%, 3.3333, whatever that is, 0.3% times 30. Uh, when you've got 50 stocks, you've got 2%. So you've got a little bit less money in each one of the stocks and you have more stocks. It's a little more diversified. And what happens is uh, returns are slightly lower doing that not a lot lower. Volatility comes down a little bit. When I uh, looked at doing that, and I did do, I did both of them at first uh, for the first year. And then I just decided, yeah, I just, I like the more concentrated version. Uh, it's a little bit more volatile, not that much. And by the way, the, you know, the Dow only has 30 stocks in it. So uh, that's, that's really what pushed me over the edge. I'm, I was thinking to myself, you know, the Dow only got 30 stocks. So why wouldn't I just put 30 stocks in this particular model, and uh, it's not all my money anyway. So I think that's another idea. Um, if you don't want to run out of money during retirement, don't put all your money in one strategy. Not a good idea. Because most strategies that are good over long time periods will have periods where they underperform. And you know, if you go through a period like the 1969 through 1982 period, where the S&P 500 basically ended up exactly where it started, and had a huge amount of volatility, you could be looking for a job in your 80s. Don't want to do that. <laughs> we want to avoid that. Or somebody that retired in uh, the first quarter of the year 2000 before the market peaked and then went 10 years and was basically back to where it had started. If you had been taking money out during that time period, think about that. And, and I did have an, a gentleman come into the office and I meant to tell him about this and I forgot. Uh, he read somewhere that you know the stock market averages about 10% a year, and that's true if you go back to the 1920s. But there are multiple 20-year time periods, multiple means more than one, where investing that way, putting all your money in the S&P index, would have actually produced negative returns. So if you are retiring, you cannot take the chance that that's going to happen which means that you shouldn't be investing that way. Because if, if you get one of those time periods, even a 10-year time period with, with negative returns, uh, and this is a very common mistake that an awful lot of people make. Somebody shows them the statistics and says, yeah, over the past you know, 90 years, stock market's produced 10% a year. So they th start thinking that they can spend 10% a year if they put all their money in stocks. That's not a good idea. 10% a year, if you'd have started in March of 2000 and taken out 10% a year, you'd have gone broke in about six years. You'd have spent all your money. How about that? You'd have gone through all your money in six years. And most people I know probably hope to be retired longer than six years. <laughs> and uh, think about that for a second. If you are retired and now you've got to go back to work six years later and you're broke, that, that doesn't sound like a very enjoyable retirement. Okay, so... How do you avoid doing that? The answer is it's the balance between stocks, bonds, and cash. That's the answer. That's the everyday person's explanation. The uh, financial services like to use three or four syllable words like asset allocation, correlation coefficients. They love to make it as complicated as they possibly can. It's not that complicated. And uh, I'm going to show you several examples. I'm going to whip out that software. Uh, I've been practicing with it. It's, it's really nice. You can kind of see what different, uh, portfolio met, um, mixes, what kind of impact that would have on your portfolio on, on your ability 
to retire and stay retired, which is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, and you've got rising health care costs. By the way, the inflation rate for retirees is significantly higher than the inflation rate for everybody else. Let me say that again really slowly. The inflation rate for retirees is significantly higher than for everybody else. Why is that? Well, it's this thing called healthcare. Healthcare costs have been rising over the past 20 years, three times faster than the normal inflation rate. And do you know who the biggest users of healthcare are? People that are getting older. I'm one of them. I go to the doctor now more than I've ever gone. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you, it's really expensive. I went in the other day, uh, the other day, it was a few months ago. I was having, a, uh, I got some nasty virus. I went in and they do all these heart tests. I'm like, why are you doing heart tests? I mean, I, I got a virus. The, uh, so I'm whatever. Yeah, whatever you guys say. Well, a, a day later, I get out of the hospital and I got a $6,500 bill, and they, they didn't, couldn't figure out what was wrong. <laughs> so uh, $6,500 bucks the, uh, for a bunch of tests. I, was, I went in, I thought I was going to get you know, an antibiotic and go home. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's expensive. I mean, it's incredibly expensive. So as you get older and you're using more money for that, you know, that that's really a problem. Your inflation rate is actually a lot higher than somebody in their, in their late 20s, early 30s. In fact, the, the inflation rate for those people is less than the actual published inflation rate in most cases because they're not spending nearly as large of a chunk of their income on health care. Health care is over 20% of GDP. The United States is the only country in the world that spends that much on health care, incidentally. Yeah, in, uh, it's a lot. And so young people have an inflation rate that's lower than the average because they're not spending quite as much. And a lot of the stuff that you buy now, I just bought those two laptops. I mean, are you kidding me? Under 200 bucks? Okay, I know they're trying to get rid of them, but I've been buying laptops forever. Yeah, and those are nice. Those are nice laptops. I seriously thought about keeping it, both of them. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm actually going to uh, raffle them off at the uh, next. So I'm going to not raffle. I'm just going to do a drawing. So you can go to my website, uh, bullingtoncapital.com, to sign up for that seminar. And uh, we're going to be giving that away. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hear the music starting to uh, warm up here, so I guess I better get off and let the commercials start playing. You listen to Bill Bullington right here on 1420 The Answer. Stay tuned because I'll be right back. Description of my glorious king for you are. The skills you can develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you an edge in the high-tech job market of tomorrow. The Guard offers career training to take advantage of your skills in science, technology, engineering, and math that can help give you a leg up to a high-paying and rewarding STEM profession. Gain practical experience with emerging technology and equipment not found in the civilian world. The Army National Guard can get you started in an array of STEM-related career fields such as information technology, communication systems, special forces engineers, technical engineering, air traffic control, and chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear science. Get a head start on your career in an exciting new field while earning money to pay for college, all while serving in your own community. Log on to NationalGuard.com or talk to a recruiter in your area to learn about all of the STEM career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. Sponsored by the Ohio Army National Guard. Aired by the Ohio Association of Broadcasters and this station. From an idea that started in 1967, Our Lady of the Wayside has grown to serve almost 900 children and adults with developmental disabilities throughout Northeast Ohio. It's an operation that is still growing thanks to tremendous support and generous donations like the Wayside's car donation program. You can donate your ride to the Wayside for a great tax write-off by calling 1-800-368-6262. The Wayside is also looking for people to join their team. They hire for attitude and train for skills. Visit thewayside.org to apply today. I'm Hugh Hewitt. This week in the Town Hall Review, brought to you in partnership with the Pepperdine Graduate School of Public Policy and ADF, the Alliance Defending Freedom. A huge Israeli discovery will test the Iran deal and President Trump's diplomatic mettle. America means business. 
and we're not going to be a pushover. But the president's diplomatic legacy could rest on another gamble, North Korea, and his meeting with Kim Jong-un, Senator Lindsey Graham. And if this happens, President Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. The leader of the United States Senate, Mitch McConnell, joins us to talk about the pace of judicial appointments. I don't think there's anything we can do in the United States Senate that's more important for America than confirming judges as rapidly as we get them. And the Israeli Prime Minister's revelation about Mossad's Iranian double-minded nuke activity may have secured his and Israel's future. Iran lied, big time. We'll cover this and much more. Join us for our program and visit our website at townhallreview.com. Saturday at 5 a.m. and Sunday at 4 p.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. Do you have one of those bathrooms that are old, outdated, or impossible to keep clean? Well, there's a new revolutionary product that transforms most baths in about two days. And it isn't a one-size-fits-all system either or a Band-Aid over the top of your old bath. Joyce Factory Direct specializes in bath makeovers where they completely remove your old, dreary shower tub and replace it with a new custom-fit solution. The result is a brand-new, sophisticated, and stylish bathroom at a great price. Joyce Factory Direct's bath makeovers system uses 100% non-porous acrylic, which means it'll stay beautiful for years to come because mold or mildew cannot accumulate. Their experts will help you with designing and choosing between different showers or tubs which are available in dozens of colors and styles, including faux marble, granite, and tile. And like all Joyce Factory Direct products, it's built and guaranteed to last. Call now to schedule your free bath makeover appointment, 440-243-5700, or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. Settle up your horses. And we're back. Hey, you can call us 216-901-0945 if you'd like to. 216-901-0945. And uh, you can go to my website, bullingtoncapital.com. Actually, uh, within a few days, the uh, this show will be posted up there. So if you hear something that you really wanted to hear uh, again, you go up there and download it, or you can find it on Apple iTunes, or you can go to 955thefish.com where it's hosted as a podcast. So that's kind of interesting. Anyway, we're just talking about this uh, seminar coming up and kinds of things that you can do to kind of reduce the amount of risk that you're taking. Make sure that you do everything you can to avoid running out of money during retirement. And uh, I got to tell you, it's, a, uh, it, it's not an easy thing to be able to generate enough um, of a return in a low interest rate environment, it's pretty difficult. Actually, it's really difficult. Psychologically, incredibly difficult. You know, actual math, not so much. I mean, you can do it. Uh, you may be, uh, uh, you may be required to take more risks than you'd probably prefer to be just because of the economic environment that we're in. But we're going to talk about all that stuff. And I am going to put up the, uh, retirement planning software that we talked about it's relatively new and i've got to uh oh i see one of my uh buddies from the uh cleveland grays getting ready to call in i forgot about that we have the cleveland grays if you don't know about it, it's the uh it's an armory it's uh downtown and uh in fact i'm going to bring dan on let him talk more about that to you hey dan are you there okay all right nope can't get it yet the uh there we go dan Good morning. Hey, good morning, how, are how are you? Real good. Um, what's going on? Oh, I can barely hear you. The uh, are you? Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Hopefully, this will get better. Yeah, Is it getting a little better. A little bit. That'll be. Uh, that should be good. I was just letting people know you were, we were talking about the Cleveland Grays and uh, being an armory, and uh, we've got an event coming up here. Yes, as uh, fellow. Uh, Cleveland Gray, you know that uh, on June 2nd, we're going to be celebrating our 125th birthday. And for those that don't know, the Cleveland Grays um, last year celebrated our 180th birthday being in Cleveland because we were founded in 1837. We were Cleveland's first militia, and we were one of the first militias to answer the call to the Civil War. We've been in Cleveland. Uh, down uh, at one, two, three, four Bolivar in downtown Cleveland for 125 years in the building that we are in, and that is the uh, big castle 
big red building across from Playhouse Square, and we're going to celebrate being there for 125 years, uh, June 2nd. And we'd like to invite the public to come on down. Yep. There's no admission. There's free parking. We're uh, handicap accessible now. And we will be having, uh, we have a Wurlitzer Wur- a Wur- a Wur- organ from the early 1900s that they used to play in the movie theaters when the movies right. were silent. Right. And uh, we have the USS Cod coming, the USO, the International Women's Air Space Museum coming. And we're going to have uh, tours for uh, throughout the day. That's awesome. And Yeah, and it's uh, from, uh, from noon to 4, Saturday, June 2nd. And we'd like to invite the... Uh, the general everyone public. to come down take a look at the, take a look at our building yeah yeah no i think anybody that's that's a great idea and uh really to have something as uh fun as that is uh and did you say it was free yes it is free oh yes wow. it is so free it's free parking no admission we're going to do tours that day and we're going to have some boy scouts the girl scouts down there i believe uh to help uh, take people around. We'll have our tour guides around, and uh, we're getting a lot of help from the community. Like I say, the USO, the USS Cattle uh, representatives will be there too, and uh, it'll make for a nice day down there. Oh, I'd say that's an awesome day. You kidding? The uh, just going through the building is is awesome. Um, I oh, remember. Yeah, uh, pardon me. Go ahead. Yeah, John, go ahead. John Philip Sousa uh, directed there. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We were we were the original home of the uh, Cleveland Philharmonic Art Orchestra. We had the first car shows in the city of Cleveland in our building. Oh wow! In our building, we have we have a big drill floor which we do run out for weddings and uh, all kind of activities because the National Guard used to train in our building uh, uh, up until the 1970s. Wow! So it's a huge facility. So we handle all kind of banquets, weddings in there. And uh, so we're going to be open giving tours. We're going to have a few dignitaries there. The ceremony will be 1 o'clock celebrating our 125th birthday. And if anybody wants a little bit more information on the Cleveland Grays, you can get the info at thegraysarmory.com. That sounds good. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk about this all the way right up until the, the seminar date. Our seminar on the, on the event day. I might, I think I could probably even put it up on my website, but because this is really oh, that would be really good if you did for us. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's the. Oh. Uh, I really uh, have enjoyed my uh, uh, time there with uh, the other people that are there. You get to meet a lot of really nice people. It's unbelievable the building. If you like old architecture, like I do, uh, my dad being a, a remodeling contractor. Um, mainly a carpenter. Yeah, I really, really liked it. We worked on a lot of old houses when I was growing up through the Cleveland area, but uh, none quite as old as that building, and and it's still in really good shape. And I, I always used to wonder what the heck that castle building was when I was driving around downtown, uh, and it wasn't until uh, you know I got involved with you guys that uh, I learned uh, all about what it was. So, yeah, it's really neat, and uh, I, I really appreciate you calling in too because uh, that way we'll, we'll rerun this segment uh, uh, repeatedly up until the event, and you can call in live uh, to promote it because I think we need to do everything we can. That's really one of the great Cleveland landmarks. Uh, it, it is, and it's also, unfortunately, one of Cleveland's best well-kept secrets, Yeah, what our organization is. And everybody goes by it when they go down to uh, Playhouse Square and on uh, East 14th there, they look at the building and they say, what the heck is that? Well, they, we are the Cleveland Grays. And you can also find us, our hashtag is Downtown Castle, as a matter of fact, oh. for uh, because of the fact that the building does look like a castle. Yeah. And uh, for members, we're always open for new members, and we have a lot of benefits as members. And, and it's uh, super cheap? <laughs> that always... Oh, it is super cheap. It's very cheap. It's Seventy-five dollars a year for membership. Right, half price if you're over sixty-five like me. You're you're still a young and no matter what you think, but me, I'm getting a little bit up there. So, uh, uh, so I get a half price for being over sixty-five. <laughs> but we have a lot of great members, a lot of military, a lot of uh, great civilians, uh, men, women, 
kids, young kids, growing uh, eighteen year olds and up, college kids, and uh, it just uh, helps support the history of the city of Cleveland because, like I say, we were founded in eighteen thirty seven. In fact, our first building was right there at at uh, Public Square where the Terminal Tower is, hmm. and that was our first location. Then we moved over one other spot, and then finally we settled there at one two three four Bolivar, right there in the corner of Fourteenth Street. Right. So. June 2nd, we'll be celebrating our 125th birthday, and we thank you for helping us uh, help promote it, Bill. Oh, no. the uh, As a member of the Grace, the uh, that's the least I could do. But appreciate yeah. you calling in. We'll get you back on. Okay. Thank you very much, Bill. You have a good day. Thanks. You too. Boy. Yeah, Cleveland Grays, Grays Emery. That's uh, 1234 Boulevard, June 2nd. You might want to write that down. Uh, you know, you're always looking for th- stuff to do on weekends, right? Especially if you have kids and this is a kid friendly environment. They get to go around, they'll get to see a whole bunch of stuff from, uh, there's a whole bunch of, uh, uh, memorabilia back from, uh, uh, even the, um, I guess it would be right around 1812, not 1812. Yeah. 1912. Yeah. The first and second world wars. Uh, there's a, a ton of stuff down there to take a look at there. The, the hand, the, the woodwork by itself, something to see when they built that and all that custom cabinetry, they were doing that by hand. <laughs> That's that blows my mind. It is the, uh, anyway, it's a good, it's a really good time, a really good event. Uh, it's a good organization. So we'll be talking about it more. And then you, so you can write that down June 2nd. Uh, feel free to give us an email. Um, I can always forward it to anybody that, uh, at the Grays that can send back a, uh, a package for you uh, or emails. I'm sure it's up on their website. Anyway, um, back to what we we're uh, kind of talking about, you know, avoiding running out of money during retirement. You know what the biggest um, um, factor is in not running out of money during retirement, particularly today? The biggest factor is the breakdown between the amount of money you have in stocks in bonds. That's the biggest factor. That's going to have the most uh, impact on your lifestyle when you're in retirement and when you're accumulating the assets. And uh, most people think, and the reason I say most people is because I've been doing this for about 30 years and I talk to them. I think you need to be 100% invested in stocks to get all the the, the returns. And that's actually not true. Um, 100% invested in stock funds is going to be incredibly volatile. And if you go through one of those time periods like 2000 through 2010, it might not be good at all. In fact, it might discourage you from ever investing in stocks. And I've got an alarm going off somewhere here in the uh, studio. Don't know what that is, but uh, we can get that handled here shortly. (laughs) But the breakdown you've got, the, the percentage that you have in stocks versus bonds is going to have a tremendous impact on the quality of life that you have during retirement. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at that at that workshop. It's something that we always have to have a conversation with uh, with anybody. When they come in, we're trying to figure out, you know, what is the best type of portfolio for you? Uh, it's what kind of fluctuation you're willing to put up with. And if you tell us that, then we can... Uh, if you can figure that out, by the way, that's not an easy question to answer for an awful lot of people. Uh, and uh, there are lots of reasons for that, but all, all else being equal, I think the software that we have and the, the methodologies that we use make it easier. And uh, we do a lot to try to to uh, help you build realistic expectations. You know, I think back again to just a conversation I've had multiple times in my career. Yeah, I'm just going to put my money in stocks and then take out 10% a year because that's what it averages, right? Yeah, that's an average, but it's not like you're going to get that every year. Obviously most people know that right now, but what they really don't know is that a lot of the declines are incredibly uh, steep. That 10% average has come with 50% plus declines. I mean, back in the thirties, you know, you had an 85% decline, 85%. Okay. So, if you had a million dollars and you get an 85% decline, your million dollars is down to 150,000 bucks. If you had a million dollars 
and you have a 50% decline, your million dollars is down to 500,000. So let's say you only have 500,000. Well, that's down to 250. You only had 100,000. It's down to 50. 50% is 50% is 50%, right? So if you, if you had a million dollars, and I know a lot of people don't, but just keeps the math easy for me. If you had a million dollars and you're down 50%, you're down to 500,000 bucks. But wait a minute, we forgot. We took off 100,000 bucks because you wanted to spend 10%. You took that out, sent it to your checking account, and you start off with a million bucks, but now you're down to 900000 and then the market goes down 50%. You're at $450,000. And if you're going to take 10% of the original principal out again, that's another $100,000. You're down to $350,000. That's what I'm talking about. You will spend yourself back to work. You can't count on that 10% number. So what kind of number can you count on? Okay, well, that depends on large part and how much fluctuation you're willing to put up with. That's going to be the biggest factor. How much fluctuation are you willing to put up with? That'll be the biggest determining factor. So we've got this really cool software now. We type in, you you uh, tell us what kind of an investor you are. You're conservative, moderately conservative. Well, maybe I'm just a moderate, middle of the road Uh I'll go into more detail on future shows and at the workshop about what that might mean, you know, how much we're investing in stocks versus bonds. And then we can put that in the software and show you what the um, most reasonable distribution rate, how much you could reasonably expect to spend without going broke. That's pretty cool. Same thing with accumulating money. Accumulating and decumulating are extremely similar. How much fluctuation are you going to put up with? And the more fluctuation that you're going you're gonna to put up with, obviously, the, the higher returns are going to be. So, But we can give you a really good idea of what that might look like while you're accumulating those, those dollars. I can't tell you how many people I've seen and heard who jumped out of the market uh, because it did so poorly uh, and they were so... Uh, it was so unexpected to them that the market would actually go down that much. They didn't think it could go down that much. Somebody told them it, oh, it doesn't happen that often. And quite frankly, the entire industry, because of the language that they use, they use standard deviation as the number for risk. That is not risk. That's not the number. It's wrong. That, that's the standard. And I'm telling you right now, it's wrong. And, uh, at some point in time, they'll get around to fixing that. I don't know. I kept thinking they were going to do that 25 years ago but they still haven't fixed it yet. <laughs> but at some point in time, they'll do something about that and then people will be more successful. I, I guarantee they'll be more successful because they'll know what they're getting into. Now I hear the music, that means I got to take another quick commercial break. You're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420 The Answer. Stay tuned because I will be right back. Do you ever find yourself saying, I need a vacation? Vacation Fixation can help. At Vacation Fixation, we specialize in all-inclusive trips and cruises to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Disney vacations. Why choose us? Our clients book through Vacation Fixation because they are frustrated with online trip brokers and timeshare scams. Whether it's a weekend getaway, a family trip, spring break, or honeymoon, Vacation Fixation will personalize a trip just for you. Want to know the hottest destinations in Cancun, Punta Cana, Jamaica, or Puerto Vallarta? Interested in room upgrades, beach reviews, or details about resort restaurants? How about finding a trip with a direct flight? At Vacation Fixation, we take all of your specific travel requests and shop our suppliers to find the best deal. What's the cost? Our suppliers pay us so you don't have to. Call 330-573-8147 for more details. Or you can visit our website at vacationfixation.com. Or check out the deal of the day on Facebook. Vacation Fixation. Do you ever find yourself saying, I need a vacation? Vacation Fixation can help. At Vacation Fixation, we specialize in all-inclusive trips and cruises to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Disney vacations. Why choose us? Our clients book through Vacation Fixation because they are frustrated with online trip brokers and timeshare scams. Whether it's a weekend getaway, a family trip, spring break, or honeymoon, Vacation Fixation will personalize a trip just for you. Want to know the hottest destinations in Cancun, Punta Cana, Jamaica, or Puerto Vallarta? Interested in room upgrades, beach reviews, or details about resort restaurants? 
How about finding a trip with a direct flight? At Vacation Fixation, we take all of your specific travel requests and shop our suppliers to find the best deal. What's the cost? Our suppliers pay us so you don't have to. Call 330-573-8147 for more details. Or you can visit our website at vacationfixation.com. Or check out the deal of the day on Facebook. Vacation Fixation. Bob Vila here with my home improvement tip of the day. How much snow on the roof is too much? That depends a lot on the way your roof was constructed. Steep and smooth roofs tend to shed snow easily, while roofs that are only slightly pitched or flat tend to collect big drifts. Another important factor is the weight of the snow. Removing a heavy snow load can be tricky. If you have a multi-story house, you'd best not be climbing up and down icy cold ladders to dizzying heights. Better to leave that to licensed insured pros who have the right equipment to get the job done right. On the other hand, if you have a single-story home, you can use a long telescoping snow rake to pull snow off the roof. One caution, though, rakes that come into contact with shingles can do a lot of damage, so look for sturdy models with small rollers that keep the edge of the rake away from the shingles. Finally, before you start pulling snow off the roof, put some thought into where the snow is going to land. You don't want to damage your plants. Get more info at BobVila.com and right here at home with me, Bob Vila. Looking for a great way to save on taxes? Look no more. Just call Our Lady of the Wayside at 1-800-368-6262 and ask about their car donation program. It's simple and it works for everyone involved. You donate your ride, you write off the selling price, and the money goes to help the physically and mentally challenged citizens served by Our Lady of the Wayside. The number to call, 1-800-368-6262. Will you want more, so get more. Donate your ride to Our Lady of the yeah. And we're back. Hey, I'm going to take a real quick phone call. If you'd like to call us, 216-901-0945, 216-901-0945. And now I got John. Good morning. Good hey. afternoon, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, let, let me play a little devil's advocate, okay? Okay. There's a musical chair going on. At the Council of Economic Thing, Navarro he seemed to be pretty well settled there. Carlo is going there, but he hasn't found a chair yet. For short term, to please the support group tariff, 1,100 mainstream business roundtable type of economists are saying, hey, you're reminding us 1929. Not in every sense. There is no hyperinflation. The only thing is, we got dollar is already strong. It is a reserve currency. Overseas, over a trillion dollar worth of money, profit, sitting there in local currency. You have to convert them back into dollars. There'll be demand. That means there'll be more stronger dollars. In the meantime, he wants to go tariff type of thing. I know he's going to change. However, in the meantime, it's a dislocation, just like the farmers, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it's, a, it's a, why do you just do something shooting from the hip, logic in the background, like a donut tire when you need to take it? I don't get it, you know? Um, me either. That's, that's, little, that's, <laughs> that's two of us. Uh, you know, I'm, I thought the dollar is going to be converted from the local currency to bring all the profits back, right? Yeah. So that means you, you have to give them dollar to get the thing. Local currency had to be buy it. Then the other thing... Which is, actually could be a good thing. The um, Well, it depends on which side uh-huh. you're on and how much... That's it, right, that's yeah. right. I'm not talking about individual company. I'm, yeah. I'm talking the macro le- macro level. Mm-hmm. This short term thing to please the crowd in West Virginia or agricultural <laughs> thing. Yeah. And with the national deficit thing, he says we'll find the money to take care of the farmers. Then our wonderful senator from Kansas had to go to, uh, uh, educate him uh, the, the difference between a bull and a tractor. Our president didn't understand that. Yeah, that's funny. Ah, uh, it's the same. You know, mm-hmm. as long as the dollar is a reserve currency, the economy is doing beautiful. And I think all that we have to do is start not polluting the air with the starting points. Yeah, well, you know, he's the, uh, he's relatively, I don't want to say old, but, you know, he's... I know, he, Navarro is kind of going one way. Carlo is a little bit more, you know, I don't remember he went to the University of Rochester. I don't remember him. And he has been on the air for a long time. 1,100 mainstream business roundtable economists. They're saying, don't do this. Right. We don't have hyperinflation at all. Right. And... 
why rock the boat with this kind of short-term thing just to make yeah, it ego? Yeah, I know. And, uh, I tell you, why don't we why don't we give him a big portrait and a big mirror to look at him yeah. so that he can calm down? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> good to talk. Well, to hey, you. have a good weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye. The uh, anyway, I just lost my whole train of thought. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. So I did get a call, and one of the uh, other topics at, at the seminar, this is super simple. Everything I'm doing, by the way, is super simple. It sounds like a lot. It's not going to be. It's not going to take more than 45 minutes to talk about everything that I'm going to talk about. Now, the questions that you'll probably have, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to stand there. We're going to take a little break after 45 minutes, which what we typically do. We'll come back. I'll do the raffle for the cool HP laptop I got <laughs> to give away. And then I'll open for questions. And normally the questions are, uh, you know, about 45 minutes. I think I like the question and answer a lot better than the uh, presentation. I'm sure I do. But during that presentation, some really important stuff. And one of them is that formula I was talking about. I need to get this tattooed on me somewhere. By the way, I haven't decided. I, I was thinking first I need to get it tattooed backwards on my forehead so I see it every day in the mirror. <laughs> but... Maybe not. <laughs> so anyway, but the uh, uh, the formula is EBIT divided by EV. EBIT, E-B-I-T, and then the slash EV. What it stands for is earnings before interest and taxes. It's kind of an estimation of cash flow that a company is generating. And why do you look at that? Well, you know, we're going to talk about that at the seminar. That's kind of a big deal. But to, sum it, to summarize, uh, even shorter, because we are on the radio, uh, if you divide the, the cash the company's generating by the amount that it would cost you to buy the entire business, you get a yield that you can now compare one company to another, even if they're completely different. Because I can't tell you what's not different is that 10% is not different from 5% because one sells chocolate and the other sells Clorox. <laughs> doesn't matter what they're selling. Cash is the cash. That's what you're looking for. That's one of the big uh, ideas that's relatively small, but's baked into that formula. doesn't matter what you're doing. What we really want to know is how much cash are you generating? How much cash are you generating relative to the amount that you're charging for the business? Now, that's a big deal. In the, in the end, it's actually the only thing that matters. In the end... When you're in business, what you're really trying to do is run a very a, a successful, profitable business, one that generates lots of cash, right? So if you wanted to compare businesses, should I invest in Netflix or Procter & Gamble? I would take a look at those two companies and I would say, okay, wait, if I owned each both companies, which one's generating more cash? Because in the long run, the one that generates the most cash is going to win. In the short run, Netflix has run circles around Procter & Gamble. In the short run, Netflix is one of those stocks that's overloved. I mean, they're really expecting an awful lot of, of uh, huge things out of Netflix going forward. The same thing that they expected out of Cisco Systems back in the late 90s. Remember that? Remember how that ended up? Cisco's only got to go up a couple hundred percent to get back to where it was 18 years ago. <laughs> the... Uh, I should never take that tone. I'm sorry. The, uh, but uh, anyway, so if you're going to compare companies, if you're really, if you're going to manage the money, and this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier in the show, uh, one of the reasons I'm so comfortable with this is because I know in the long run, the amount of cash the company generates matters. Over the next three or four years, it's going to be whatever people think is going to happen is going to matter the most. It's what they think is going to happen. Remember how AOL went way up and then crashed? Remember this company called iOmega? They had a 250 megabyte floppy disk and that stock went up 1,500% in 18 months and then it crashed and they're not even in existence anymore. You remember that? I do. Because people used to call me on this show and say, what do you think about iOmega? Uh, you ever heard of a CD-ROM? What's that? Uh, it's going to be the replacement for that 250 megabyte floppy. And they don't have the patent on that one, by the way. Okay, so, uh, and if you looked at the amount of cash that company was generating relative to the business value, 
the, the yield, the cash yield, you would not have invested. You would have avoided that pain and anguish. <laughs> and that's, that's a big part of investing is avoiding the pain. <laughs> you can't avoid all the pain. That's you know, kind of like uh, Eastern philosophy. Pain is inevitable. It is inevitable. I can't even speak today. Pain is inevitable. Suffering, however, is optional. <laughs> and uh, you don't suffer as much when you know that you've done the right things and the prices just aren't moving in your favor. Okay, so that's a, uh, I know that's probably really deep for a lot of you people, but uh, you start investing and start watching your money, you'll get, you, you'll get hip to that really quickly. <laughs> so anyway, somebody wrote in with a question. Uh, I discussed the operating cash flow of enterprise yield measurement and he's asking what would be a good average uh, and a poor number uh, for the calculations. So the ones that I'm looking at, if I'm looking at the yields, the cash yields, now this is before interest payments or taxes, okay? So before interest payments or taxes, uh, it's also um, they're not counting depreciation and amortization. If you take back those out of the equation, the, the cash flow drops back down a little bit too. But we're just looking at uh, kind of, it's very, very, very similar to operating income. You pay all the cost of doing the business, the HR costs, uh, you know, just the basic cost of running the business. How much cash do you have before you start making interest payments and paying off your debt? Uh, and even uh, uh, the depreciation and amortization hasn't been taken out either. So uh, it's a good measure of cash flow. What is a good number for that? A pretty good number is right around 10%. That's a pretty good number. Now, if they don't have any debt, that's going to affect that. Okay. But a pretty good number is right around 10%. So a cash yield of 10% because you're going to have to pay taxes on it. You know? And after taxes, uh, then it's going to be a little bit less than that, uh, depending on what their tax bracket is. The uh, Incidentally, because you're requiring that the company has operating income, what it means if a if a company can't bill or I'm sorry if a company can't cover their basic business expenses, why would you be looking at that company? I mean, they're literally they're a potential for bankruptcy. Uh, um, oftentimes, those companies, when they're very new and they get started, they are losing money. They're bleeding cash. That's that's one of the terms that's used to describe that, and they're the people that are investing in those companies are banking on the fact that they think that not only can they eventually cover the costs of doing business, but that they can pay taxes and interest on any debt they might have uh, and absorb depreciation and amortization and then be left over with a profit. Okay. That's a, that's a tall order. Okay. And there are lots of companies out there that are popular who aren't profitable. So all other things being equal, I'd rather let one of my momentum models deal with those stocks. I'll, you know, stocks I want to pick, I want to use those companies that are generating real cash. I hear the music. That means my show is over. Sorry about that. We'll continue these conversations every week here, uh, Saturday morning, 11 to noon on 1420 The Answer. This is Bill Bullington. Have a good week, everybody. Good luck and good investing. You just caught another edition of the Bullington Capital Report. Broadcasting every Saturday at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and you'd like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or online at BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC.